Live from downtown Youngstown, this is the WDNC News. Good evening, I'm Jeff Wolfson. And I'm Keith Rubenstein. And here's the news. Republican presidential hopeful Pat Robertson has dropped out of the presidential race. Robertson was the only Republican to stay in the race besides Vice President George Bush. Throughout <laughs> Robertson's campaign, he downplayed his former job as a television evangelist. Robertson was always very popular with the religious Christian voters. He now plans on returning to Texas to continue his role as a co-host of the popular television series, The 700 Club. Robertson picked up 44 delegates for the Republican National Convention. His campaign costs exceed $25 million. One of the worst bus accidents in U.S. history occurred in Carrollton, Kentucky, Saturday. A pickup truck collided with a church bus. 27 people were killed and over 40 were injured. Most of the victims were teenagers on their way home from a church outing. The head-on collision ignited fire and explosions aboard the bus. And within seconds, victims were trapped by a raging inferno. Witnesses report that the bus driver and assistant church pastor, John Perriman, was trapped behind the steering wheel while the bus was engulfed in flames. Apparently, Perriman continued to direct children out of the bus while being burned alive. Perriman is presumed dead. The driver of the truck, Larry Mahoney, is currently in critical condition at the Humana Hospital of Louisville. The cause of the accident is yet undetermined. Results of tests to see if drugs or alcohol were in Mahoney's blood have not yet been released. A woman gives birth to a baby and leaves it in a bathroom. Niles police say leads so far have failed to produce the woman who gave birth to and then left the baby in a local park restroom yesterday. The baby boy remains hospitalized but will be released to the Trumbull County Children's Services Agency tomorrow. Authorities talked with witnesses who saw a woman leaving the area shortly after the baby was found. She still cannot be located. A missing U.S. helicopter has been found. A Pentagon spokesman in Washington said the wreckage of a U.S. helicopter was recovered along with the bodies of two of its crewmen. The helicopter was reported missing in the Persian Gulf last month after U.S. forces sank six Iranian ships. The bodies of two U.S. naval pilots and the wreckage of the Marine Cobra helicopters were located in the southern Persian Gulf on Sunday. The pilots, Captain Kenneth Hill of Thomasville, North Carolina, and Captain Stephen Leslie of Newburn, North Carolina, were the only two casualties from the April 18th fighting. The remains will be shipped home on Thursday. Recent projections of Mahoney County's economic future by state statisticians contradict. Ohio Data User Center says the county's population by the year 2010 will have decreased about 20% from the level of 1980. If this happens, the county could lose representation in the U.S. House of Representatives and local shares of federal funding. On the other hand, the State Department of Development believes the area has experienced somewhat of an economic turnaround. Barry Bennett of the State Department of Development argues that Mahoney County residents are now making more, are making more now than when the steel mills closed. Residents now earn over $9,000 per capita as compared to the 1979 figure of almost $7,000. The CIA covered up an officer spying for Russia, a new book claims. The book is entitled The Spy Who Got Away. It was written by David Wise and has interviews with many top CIA officials. Edward Lee Howard was dismissed from the CIA in 1983. He was considered a security risk to the United States, the book contends. Howard had been in training for an assignment in Moscow before he was let go. Howard fled the States after suspicions were raised about him by a Soviet defector. He resurfaced nine months later in the Soviet Union. Intelligence officials have characterized the case as one of the most damaging in recent history. Howard had disclosed to the Soviet Union the CIA's methods of operations and sources of data. Howard denied committing espionage before he left the country. The book reports that Howard had a Swiss bank account with almost $200,000, and he had knowledge to a friend and former CIA colleague that he did it, referring to espionage. In sports, Larry Holmes comes out of retirement for the second time in two years in hopes of regaining the heavyweight title once again. In Las Vegas tonight, Larry Holmes fought undisputed heavyweight champion Iron Mike Tyson for the belt. It was a bloodbath lasting all 15 rounds. Surprisingly, it was not stopped as Holmes regained his composure each time the referee cornered him. Then in the eighth round, Holmes did the impossible. He floored Tyson with the blow to the ribs, then an uppercut to the jaw. Tyson had never been knocked out in all of his 22 years of boxing. The next few rounds were close, although Tyson was bleeding profusely from the left eye. Then comes the final round. Both men ready to collapse. They approach one another and duke it out in the middle of the ring for three straight minutes. The winner, by split decision, and new heavyweight champion of the world, is 39-year-old Larry Holmes.
The Minnesota Strikers were slightly better than the Cleveland Force during the major indoor soccer league regular season. When the two teams met in the Eastern Division Series, Cleveland got hot. The Force rocked Richfield Coliseum before 16,000 screaming fans. The hero of last night's match was John Stolmeyer, who scored a record high five goals. Stolmeyer's goals paced Cleveland to a 7-2 victory mm -hmm. and to the championship game to be held in the Houston Astrodome. Cleveland will meet the winner of the Western Division Final, which pairs the Kansas City Comets and the San Diego Soccers. That was one heck of a game, Jeff. It sure was, Keith. Uh, I'll tell you what, Stolmeyer was utterly awesome last night. He can do it in those clutch situations. Oh. For the entire WDNC news staff, I'm Jeff Wolfson. And I'm Keith Rubenstein. Good night. Good night. This has been the WDNC News, live from downtown Youngstown. Good evening. I think it was a good story. And, uh, we got it made and... Uh...